Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to explore uh, in detail about uh, solving Budger's equation using physics and formal neural networks uh, or simply pins. So in this Jupyter notebook, I have put together all the code step by step and uh, I will explain each part in detail. If you are new to neural networks or uh, if you are new to partial differential equations itself, no need to worry. We will tackle this entire tutorial one step at a time. By the end of this tutorial, you will clearly understand how to properly implement a physics informal neural network. Let's begin by understand what a physics informal neural network is. So in traditional machine learning, we use a lot of data to train a model. But what if we do not have sufficient data and at the same time we want to exactly satisfy some set of physical laws expressed via some ordinary or partial differential equations. So with traditional machine learning methods, so it's very tough. So that's where this physics informal neural network comes into picture. Pins combine two things, the flexibility of neural networks and the strictness of this physical equations. So instead of just fitting the neural network to a data, we guide it using the laws of physics, such as this partial differential equations. This allows the network to learn the solution that naturally follows the physical behavior of the system. In this tutorial, we will be developing the physics informal neural network to solve this one dimensional Burgers equation. This equation is a well known nonlinear time dependent equation. So we have time and uh, we have non-linearity here. So this is the actual problem we are going to solve. Our goal is to find solution u of x comma t within the domain in which x ranges from minus 1 comma 1 and t ranges from 0 comma 1. Here x represents the spatial variable and t represents the temporal variable meaning time. And this is our boundary condition and this is our initial condition. So in this initial condition at time t is equals to 0 for every value of x the solution should yield minus sine pi x and in this boundary condition at the edges of the spatial domain that is at minus 1 and 1. So for all times t these values of the solution u of minus 1 comma t and u of 1 comma t should be 0. In this tutorial we set this new the viscosity coefficient to 0 0.01 divided by pi to control uh, the smoothness of the solution. So it is a standard value used in uh, many literature for this problem. So we will stick to this value. Now for this uh, actual problem, let's take a look at this reference solution. This reference solution is documented in a deep XDA uh, library documentation. So here I have provided the link. So if you click this link, you will be able to download a dot npg file so npg file is a numpy file this file contains three arrays so basically they are uh, these three so you will be having this uh, t x and uh, u sol so x represents the spatial points t represents the time points or temporal points and u sol represents the exact solution of u x comma t at this uh, x comma t's. So I have extracted in this uh, code and uh, when we plot it using this uh, matplotlib library. So this is how our uh, reference budget solution looks like. So the minimum value is minus 0 0.832 and the maximum value is 0 0.832 and uh, you see the x ranges from minus 1 to 1 and the t ranges from 0 to 1. So we expect our pin to produce the same solution. Okay. For the sake of completeness, I have included a detailed explanation of the significance of Burger's equation in this section. I will not go in detail into this section right now, but uh, if you are interested, feel free to read this section to understand how this equation is used in various fields. Uh, Burger's equation is a very popular problem. So it is used to benchmark many numerical analysis and machine learning techniques. You will see it being used in a lot of research papers and academic works. Next, now let's look at the formulation of total loss function. So it is a very important aspect in physics and formal neural networks because this is where uh, the magic happens because it is the loss function that guides our network to find a solution that satisfies all physical loss and uh, conditions of the problem. For our uh, problem, the total loss function consists of three components. They are the initial condition loss, boundary condition loss and the PDE residual loss. Uh, here 
we represent uh, initial condition loss using LIC, boundary condition loss using LBC and uh, residual loss using uh, LPDE. Let's break down each of these components one by one to see what they actually mean and how they are formulated. The first one is the initial condition loss. So the initial condition for our uh, bogus equation is this. So at a time t is equal to 0 for all values of x the solution u of x comma t is minus sine pi x. So we are defining it here like this. Here u n n x comma 0 represent the solution obtained from the neural network at any x and at time t is equal to 0. This means that at time t is equal to 0 the value of u should follow a sinusoidal curve. So to make sure our neural network satisfies this we define a loss function that measures the difference between the predicted value and the actual value at xi comma 0. Here xi represents all spatial points defined at time t is equal to 0. And next we have this uh, boundary condition loss. So this loss ensures that the neural network satisfies the boundary conditions at two spatial boundaries that is at uh, minus 1 comma t and 1 comma t. So minus 1 is on the left end and plus 1 is on the right end. So at these boundaries for any value of t the solution u of x comma t should produce 0. So that is what we will achieve in this loss function. So this loss function, boundary loss function, so we have two components here. So this component is the left boundary condition and this component is the right boundary condition. So u n n represents the solution obtained from the neural network and u b c represents the actual value. Similarly here, this is the solution obtained from the neural network and uh, this is the actual value. We take a difference and and uh, we evaluate the mean squared error loss. Next is the PD residual loss. So this is the actual main governing differential equation. This term ensures that the network satisfies the governing equation that is the main Burgess equation throughout the domain. We compute the error in satisfying the equation at every point of x comma t in the domain. If the equation is uh, perfectly satisfied the error should be zero. The PD residual loss captures this error and is formulated like this. Uh, here nx represents the total number of spatial points and nt represents the total number of temporal points uh, and similarly unn represents the neural network uh, prediction and uh, unn by tt represents the partial derivative of unn with respect to time and uh, here the partial derivative of unn with respect to x and this is the second order partial derivative of unn with respect to x and here we evaluate the total mean squared error loss and we store it in this lpde and next we combine all these uh, three losses lic lbc and lpd combining in a sense we simply add them to form this uh, total loss by minimizing this uh, total loss during training we ensure that the network solution satisfies the initial condition boundary condition and uh, pde across the entire domain next after defining uh, the loss function we have to set up the collocation points uh, so Think of these collocation points as the locations in the domain where we evaluate um, the PD and the boundary condition. So uh, for demonstration purpose, I have created this short code to see how the collocation points looks like in the actual domain and at the boundaries. So here uh, the blue dots represents the domain points and this uh, green and, and green points represents the initial condition points and this uh, red and uh, orange dots represents this uh, boundary condition evaluation points. So here these represents the points on the left boundary and these represents the points on the right boundary. Okay. So for demonstration purpose I just considered uh, 25 points across uh, the x and uh, the t but in actual training we consider more points. So if I consider more points, for example, 50 or 100 or 200 in this demonstration picture, it becomes clumsy actually. So that's why I have used just 25 points. And if you look at the arrangement of this point, so I have arranged this point with uh, uniform spacing. But in some literature, you will see this point selected using some uh, Latin hypercube sampling and some other sampling techniques. But for now, in this tutorial, we will be using this uh, uniform grid sampling like this. So in x direction and in the t direction, we sample points uniformly like this. So that's it for the 
theory next we see how to actually implement this uh, physics informed neural network so implementation mainly involves this three steps actually so first one we have to define the neural network architecture second we have to properly define the loss function and uh, incorporate the appropriate uh, pd residuals and uh, initial and uh, boundary condition losses appropriately into this loss function and next we have to train this function so after the training is over the next stage is to evaluate the results for accuracy so sometimes we if you have the reference solution we will compare it with the reference solution and in many cases we won't be having a, the reference solution so in such scenarios we will evaluate the residual losses and some other terms so that is the fourth stage so let's see how the neural network architecture is defined so our pin in this tutorial is a simple feed forward uh, network with uh, four hidden layers so each hidden layer consists of uh, 20 neurons and the input layer consists of two neurons that is x comma t and the output layer consists of only one neuron that is u of x comma t and uh, we are using this uh, tan h activation function because they help capture smooth variations in the solution this simple architecture is uh, usually sufficient for uh, pins dealing with uh, 1d problems like this one and uh, here we are defining one uh, forward function uh, because this is where uh, we evaluate the neural network put using this uh, predefined number of uh, neurons in each layer and the activation function next we define the loss function so the loss function as i said is made up of three components the pd residual and the initial condition and the boundary condition so if you look at this pd residual takes four arguments that is x t model and new value so new value by default i fix it to 0 0.01 here i have divided with pi as well just to be consistent with the literature and uh, the other arguments t x and model uh, will vary and uh, here uh, i am just uh, setting the gradient requirements to true and then here i am just evaluating the u and uh, using this uh, autograd automatic differentiation so here i am evaluating the first derivative of u with respect to t and uh, here i am evaluating the first derivative of u with respect to x and uh, here i am evaluating the second derivative of u with respect to x that is uh, dou square u by dou x square after i evaluate these values i put them here in the residual in the same way as it is defined in the equation like this so it is the first derivative with respect to time it is the first derivative with respect to x multiplied by u and uh, it is the second derivative with respect to x multiplied by nu when we put together all terms so time derivative u times ux minus this uh, second derivative times nu we get uh, the total residual ideally if the solution is accurate this total residual should be zero and the next is the initial condition so the initial condition definition is very simple at time t is equal to zero for all x it should follow a sinusoidal pattern so minus sinusoidal pattern that's what we are giving it here and the boundary condition definition is also simple for any t at x is equals to either minus one or one it should return zero that's it and here i am defining the actual training set for x and t collocation points as you see here i am considering 200 points between minus 1 and 1 and uh, here i am considering 100 points between 0 and 1 so after creating these individual points here i am making a, a grid so basically here i am making the actual coordinate x comma t so here it is a separate spatial point it is a separate temporal point but here we are making a grid like uh, x comma t so here if you have 200 x points and 100 t points so total we have 20,000 x comma t coordinates okay and then uh, here i am instantiating this uh, physics informed neural network via this uh, model variable you might have noticed that in this tutorial i am using pytorch instead of tensorflow in my earlier tutorials i used a tensorflow so why i am using pytorch so mainly because of its uh, simple syntax so the syntax of pytorch is fairly more uh, straightforward and feels more intuitive when you are coding for example operations like matrix multiplications or reshaping tensors are more direct in pytorch you will feel like uh, you are working in actual python rather than using any a separate deep learning library also i felt pytorch is uh, more beginner friendly so for this tutorial i wanted to keep things as simple and easy to follow as possible hence i shifted to pytorch from tensorflow for 
time being in our later tutorials we will again shift back to tensorflow eventually we have to get complete grip over both tensorflow and pytorch and we should be able to implement physics and form a neural network with both the libraries that's our ultimate objective of this tutorial series for optimization i am using this uh, adam optimizer with a, a learning rate of 0.001 so after defining this model and optimizer and uh, defining this uh, training set so here i am implementing the actual training loop so overall i am considering uh, around 12000 epochs so each epoch involves computing the loss performing the back propagation and updating the model parameters so these are the main three steps that uh, continuously do in each epoch so here this is where we are computing this uh, initial condition loss so here first we are evaluating this upred upred is evaluated via model x comma t but t is defined like this so here torch dot uh, zeros like x means so it will take the shape of the x array and uh, it will produce zeros with that shape and uh, similarly here we are evaluating the u true with this initial condition so it takes this uh, x value and uh, returns this uh, sign pi x minus sign pi x that's what we are evaluating this here in u true after that we are evaluating this uh, total initial condition loss using this uh, mean square error so it is u pred minus u true square at all the points of x and similarly here we evaluate this uh, boundary condition loss and uh, here we are evaluating this uh, pd residual so as i said this residual gives some value we will take a square of it ideally this should be zero if the solution is exact or analytical but since it is evaluated over a process of time so initially we will see a very big residual and slowly it will goes to near zero so we will combine all these three losses here to form this uh, total loss and after that uh, here we are setting zero grad for the optimizer and then here we are setting up this backward propagation and here we are uh, setting up this uh, optimizer so these three steps like uh, loss evaluation and uh, back propagation and uh, updating the model parameters will be repeated for all the epochs so here at the end of every 500th epoch i'm printing the loss so you can print it for any number of epochs but uh, to keep the space low so that's why i'm printing for only 500 epoch this is the loss pattern they have obtained so initially at the end of first epoch i noticed a loss of 0.4925 and gradually it reduced and at the end of 11500 epoch i see a loss of 0.0013 but if you notice the last uh, three loss terms that is from 10500 to 11000 11500 you see the loss is not uh, greatly improving actually i mean the, the loss is not greatly reducing so overall around 10000 steps are uh, sufficient to get this uh, training properly done even if you are still seeing a very high loss at the end of uh, 12000 step or 15000 steps so then there is no point in increasing the number of epochs it's better to increase the architecture itself so currently we have considered uh, four in hidden layers right maybe you can add some five hidden layers or 10 hidden layers and in each hidden layer you can actually increase the number of uh, neurons okay so like that you can modify this neural network itself to make it more uh, accurate so after this uh, training is done here i am doing the testing so what i am doing is here i am taking a another set of uh, x and t points for uh, testing purpose and i am uh, making the grid out of this x test and t test and then here i am evaluating the predicted values from the model and uh, here i am uh, making some settings for plotting this data into this contour plot so here i am plotting two plots so one is for the pin solution and the other is for the exact solution so if you look at here this is our pin solution and this is our reference burger solution so if you look at our pin solution the maximum value is 0.832 the minimum value is 0.832 and we were able to achieve the same as with the reference solution and this is the x and this is the t so overall our starting points of this and this are also near and this one and this one is also more or less same but by looking at the contour plots like this these are not 
very informative actually so these are good for looking but for the actual uh, point wise comparison so these plots are not so efficient so that's why to get a deeper understanding of uh, how well our pin has performed let's compare the predicted solution with the reference solution at different time slices time slices means so here let's take any time slice for example at uh, time t is equals to 0.25 and see how the u solution is varying across all x points so like that take a constant time and evaluate all the use with respect to uh, this varying x so that's what we are plotting here so here so that's what uh, we are plotting here so here i have considered uh, three time slices time t is equals to 0.25 and time t is equals to 0.5 time t is equals to 0.75 so you can add any number of time slices that you want so it will what it does is it will take a time t for example it will fix the time t to 0.25 and uh, evaluate the solution again for all the x's ranging from minus 1 to 1 so when you look at the solution it looks like this actually so when time t is equals to 0 0.25 and at a time t is equals to 0 0.5 and at time t is equals to 0 0.75 this is how our solution looks at some locations for example here and here our solution is little inferior but uh, if you look at the overall pattern and uh, the values we were able to achieve a good accuracy in terms of our pin solution we can also improve this uh, even further by increasing the architecture by adding more uh, number of hidden layers and uh, neurons in each hidden layer here uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes so here these two plots are above and uh, below and uh, i am unable to see them in one screen so that's why i plotted them side by side here so to have a complete look at the plot with respect to both pin solution and uh, the reference solution side by side so that's it there's nothing more in this code actually to sum up we have successfully used a physics informed neural network to solve the one dimensional non linear time dependent burgos equation we started by defining the problem we learned how to set up the neural network we learn how to formulate the loss function and uh, we learned how to finally train and evaluate the model i hope this tutorial has given you a solid understanding of uh, how to implement pins for solving pdes mainly time dependent nonlinear pdes if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to leave a comment below also i have an important uh, announcement to make so we just crossed uh, thousand subscribers for our channel so i just want to take a moment to thank uh, everyone for uh, helping us to reach this uh, thousand subscriber milestone it is a very important milestone for us your support means a lot if you find this tutorial helpful please hit the like button so it really increases the reach of this video and brings more people to this video that's all the help i am expecting from you guys so please like the video thank you for watching and uh, happy learning